USC hosts third-ranked Utah on Saturday with the Los Angeles Times. I'm Lindsay Theory. This is Gary Klein with a preview of the matchup. Gary, USC's 3-3. Three and three. Utah is undefeated. At the beginning of the season, I don't think anybody thought this would be the scenario halfway through the season. No, many people had USC picked to win the Pac-12 conference to, to be the team that might be number three going into this game. Instead, it's Utah. Kyle Whittingham, a guy who's been mentioned as a possible candidate to uh, become USC's permanent head coach, will have a little bit of an audition on Saturday at the Coliseum, and uh, certainly not the scenario that most people predicted. Utah is a physical football team. Clay Helton knows it, and he sure hopes his Trojans know it. They say this game is going to be one in the trenches, but at least on one side side of USC's line, the offensive line, it's going to look perhaps a lot different than it has the last several games. It really will. We're going to see Zach Banner, all six feet nine of him, moving from the right side into the spotlight role at left tackle. He's got to protect Cody Kessler's blind side against one of the Pac-12's most aggressive defenses. Toa Lobendon back at center because Max Turk, of course, is out for the season. So a lot of shifting on USC's offensive line. It doesn't bode well going against a team like Utah. And freshman Chuma Adoga, he'll be sliding in there at right tackle. Now, you mentioned Cody Kessler. Two games, each with two interceptions. He's thrown as many interceptions at this point in the season as he did all of last season. What does Kessler need to do to get back on track? Well, he needs to make better decisions, I think, in terms of not forcing the ball into certain situations. Against Notre Dame, one of those picks, he had one-on-one -on -one coverage with Juju Smith. It was a beautifully thrown ball, but the defensive back just made a spectacular play. The other one, maybe uh, you know, an error in judgment. So he's got to get back to not playing it so safe that he won't let pull the trigger, but he's got to make some better decisions because, as you mentioned, we're halfway through the season. He's got as many interceptions as he had all of last year. USC's defense will have its work cut out. Devontae Booker leads the Utes in rushing and receiving, and Helton calls him one of the most physical players in the Pac-12. Right. Justin Wilcox, USC's defensive coordinator, says he runs angry. You know, he runs with purpose. And uh, n number three in the conference in rushing, he compliments quarterback Travis Wilson very well. And Wilson is no easy task to bring down either at 6'7", 230 pounds, a guy that wants to run the ball as well. What are going to be keys for USC's secondary? A few big plays given up last week. It's going to be interesting to watch USC secondary simply because Adoree Jackson has spent so much time this week on mm -hmm. offense. I'm curious to see what his role is going to be on defense. Uh, Iman Marshall, Kevon Seymour, the safeties, they're all going to have to step up because Utah is solid in all three phases, offense, defense, and special teams. The pressure is going to be on that secondary. And speaking of safety, safety John Plattenberg has been slowed this week and absent from practice because of a health illness. So Leon McQuay has done some filling in for John Plattenberg in that position. Keep it on the Los Angeles Times. Gary and I will obviously be at the game Saturday bringing you all the latest. And you can follow each of us on Twitter at LA Times Klein and at Lindsay Theory.